seeding is um, a big thing in this tournament. You guys, you got some unseeded guys. How do you approach it with those guys? I, I think the same. Yeah. I think the same that, you know, even when you're seeded, that you know, I was on that seeding committee for ten years, and that it's real easy to get the first six or seven. You know, you get a pile of every person entered in every weight class, and you got to seed fifteen, and you get you get sure seeds, maybe seeds, no, and then you get the first five, six, seven done. And you've got a stack of people that it's just real even up, and so you get to the number they want seated, and you've got about six, seven left over that are somebody's nightmare draw into the tournament. And even when we've had, you know, Greg and Scott Collins, different people that are seated one or two, that you look and say, boy, that's not such a good draw, or look who we have second, that you've got 33 of the best people in the country, and you just put them all in, and we just tell them, regardless, doesn't matter. You just be ready to wrestle. And, uh, you know, you just don't pay any more attention to it. Just it's time to wrestle. And whoever's in front of you, you get ready to wrestle, get your best match out like you've been doing all year, and move through the tournament. And you've got two tournaments. You got, you're entered to win it. You take one at a time as you build. If you take a tough loss, you're in a second tournament. Your goal is to come back and take third. So you've got two tournaments going on. You're in the first one, and it doesn't matter who's in front of you. Just go. Well, all so, your guys are going to face a good wrestle right off the bat, so they've sure. got to be ready to go right away. Yeah, and, and hopefully the, the mantra that they've been given all year long is the match that's most important to them is the one that's in front of them, and that you respect every opponent exactly the same. You don't turn it up for this, turn it down, turn it back up. So when you get used to, no matter who it is, whether it's Davidson or it's Oklahoma State or it's Oklahoma or it's Clarion, that you go through your routine, whatever music you want, when you put your headgear on, you're out there to get your very best wrestling done, and you'll, you'll make a decision when it's all done, was it a worthy opponent or not. So as long as they've been operating from that premise that it really doesn't matter. You're going to draw. You're, you're happy to be there. Whoever is in front of you, that you've you got to get your best wrestling out, and you're in two tournaments. You're in the first one to take one at a time, build the tournament as you go through it. You take a loss, then you're in a second tournament, and, and it's time to battle again. I was talking to Colin. He said he studies the opponent a little bit. He said you can get too much information. Uh, how do you approach that with your guys? Well, each one's a little different. You, you take uh, Nathan Panese. He didn't ever want to see him. Yeah. He, he wanted you to do it. If there's anything special, tell me. He just didn't like doing it. You know? So you've kind of got to go know, know your individual. Okay. And, uh, you know, some, and you've got to teach them how to watch film, too. That, you know, if you get too hung up on on trying to stop what they do or boy he does this well that you you really got to do what you do well in every setting and if they do something special you pay attention to little things and then you just shut it off you, you know it's just you know Nate Carr used to like keep it real simple he said you don't get it real wide the guy has two arms two legs you grab two of his legs you push into him he falls down you pull one arm it goes up you shoot underneath <laughs> it just keep it real simple instead and, of waiting on a move maybe that they may not use well, even even though you you change your style, try change your style too much, you yeah. you're not going to do that. You got to do what you do well. Be aware if there's certain things in certain situations he likes to do. You're aware of it, but that's about as deep as you go with it. You've just got to go bring your best game to the to the situation. Do you, you subscribe to the survive and advance? Is that is that the way you approach it? I mean, obviously tournament wrestling is different than dual meet wrestling. It's is that what you tell your guys? Well. Again, you, you, can't, you can't wrestle the semifinals when you're in the first match. So you yeah. just, whether it's a dual meet or a tournament, you're wrestling one match at a time. So it, it doesn't come out a whole different. You get yourself ready. You've got whoever it is right in front of you. You don't worry about whatever that next match be, be until you get there. And now you're preparing for that match. So it, it doesn't change significantly as long as they do it right. When you, when you get in trouble is when you're, you're wrestling the finals and you're in the second match that you're not, you're not in the present. You've got to stay right where you're supposed to be. How do you treat these guys going into a big arena? I mean, I know you go into big venues all the time, and I'm sure guys are different. Do you try to keep them low-key and down and conserve their energy, or do you get them fired up? How do you – is that, or is that a case-by-case -case basis? Well, you know, some of it's kind of – you're asking a little bit of a periodization of, of, of training that, you know, that as the season goes on, the practices get shorter, yeah. you know, the volume's less, the intensity goes up. And you try and make sure that they are intense, but they're well rested going into the tournament. And when we go out there, we'll make sure they get in the arena. The day before, we'll have our practice in the arena so they get a little comfortable with it. So the first time they step in isn't when they're going to participate in it. And um, 
you know, uh, again, I think it goes back that they, they've been doing this all their life. They've got to just prepare for that match that's in front of them and, um, and do what you know, do every day in that setting. And that, in that I'll share, and you'll, you'll edit this because it'll get long, but, you know, that, that uh, we, had, we had a team-building thing before Nationals one year, and Dean Morrison was in there, and Dean had been very successful every year and never placed in the National Tournament. And Ed Etzel was running it, and, uh, and I said, Ed, how did you prepare for the Olympics? And he didn't like the focus on him. And he says, all right. He says, for myself and when I work with the Olympians, it, the real challenge is to do what you do every day in that setting. Where they fail is they think, boy, now it's the Olympics. I've got to do more. Yeah. And he said, so, you know, we shoot in obscurity. Three people are there. Now I'm the first event. Television cameras are over my shoulder, and they say, you're the world champion. You're the favorite. You must expect to win. I said, no, I'm not. No, no. He said, I was their worst interview ever. <laughs> that my goal was to just keep it real simple. Yeah. I knew if I did my best shooting, it would compete to win a gold. If someone did better, they did. I can't control that. And Dean was gyrating. You could see his whole body in reflex. And he had his hand up, and he says, he says, you know, every year I did extremely well during the year, and I'd go out and say, boy, this is nationals. I can feel my I better wait for perfect, because now it's nationals. I feel my duck. Well, that's not a perfect set. I better wait for perfect as nationals. And he said, I'd go 1 and 2, 0 oh and 2, and out when I'm trying to treat it different. He said, I just, and, and it isn't necessarily why he won, but you don't know what little ingredients go in to come out successful where he took one at a time and end up winning a national title a senior. So, you know, it really comes down to doing what you do all year in this setting. When you start thinking now it's all different because it's nationals, that's when you start setting yourself up for failure. Well, you had that setting in the Big 12. I mean, I'm sure for you it was important to get the guys off their feet, get them prepared because all those kids they were facing out there are basically the same guys they're facing in the national tournament. Well, you know, it's, it's definitely elite, elite competition, so I, I think that that's helpful. Yeah. You know, where they're starting to feel this is their peer group. And, and that's why every year we've always tried to make sure that we have Penn State or a Lehigh or an Illinois or Nebraska or so forth so that, you know, they get a good sense that this is where they belong and they've been doing this diet of competition all year long. Are you happy where they're at right now? Are you, you pleased with going into the tournament? Yeah, and I, I'm, I don't know if it's superstitious, but I don't like to get <laughs> too over the top. That I, you know, I like the group of guys. They've been competing real well, but, but they're not, they're not, seated so they're not one of those guys that that have been evaluated as someone that if they have a good tournament they're on the podium but but i do believe all have the ability to compete really successful in this tournament had colin won the big 12 that he would have probably had a top five seed so that he wrestled the number one seated wrestler at edinburgh last dual meet and was three three in the last period ended up winning losing four three five three so he has a real good understanding that if he gets his best wrestling out that he's going to compete in that upper echelon and i think the rest feel that way too but um, you know, there, there's only one that has been to the turn before. So if I have a concern, that's, that's my concern, that, that Colin, as good as he's been, has had some different adversity to where he hasn't been in the tournament before. Uh, you know, if I had some concern, that might be it. But, but hopefully there's enough seasoning. Uh, Colin's been in enough national competition that, that he gets it and we'll get him in the, in the arena. And, and uh, hopefully we just do what we've been talking about, keep the focus real simple. And, you got a match in front of you, and you got to go. You beat a good guy, you knock a good wrestler out right away. Yeah, you take That's, his seed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, hopefully we're ready to go. You never know for sure until you blow the whistle. But, uh, yeah, I think we've had good practices. They're, they're good kids. They're, they're happy to go. They're excited to go. So, uh, you yeah, know, we're going to find out.